Well, for me, September 11, 2001 is a, a vivid memory, and I, I'm sure it is for most people. Um, you remember where you were and what the day was like, the weather, the blue skies. My husband had stayed overnight to work the next duty at Rescue One, so we went um, to the by the firehouse to see him before we went over to our appointment. I was at Ground Zero, and I was in the shopping area between the North Tower and the South Tower, Building 1 and Building 2. And, and Building 1, uh, the North Tower, is where Windows on the World was located. And I was in the eyeglass shop. I was getting my reading glasses adjusted. We had a little extra time, so he took the children and he put them on the fire truck. And then we all got back in the car. He, he went to each door and gave us each a kiss. And I felt a jolt. I felt a, a vibration, a strong rumble. We hear this big airplane going overhead. And we thought, I said, um, oh, look at the big airplane to my son, who was one and a half at the time, and my daughter was three and a half. And my son kind of hung back. I said, what are you doing? And then I heard all the fire trucks. And I said, yeah, that's probably daddy. And the shop was located just adjacent to the subway lines. And I thought, gee, I've, I've been in this building for four years. I've never felt the subway so, so strongly. I've never felt that, that jolt from rumble from the subway. And in fact, it wasn't the subway at all, but it was the first plane hitting Tower One. Just general confusion. No one kind of knowing what was going on. I remember watching a television in my classroom and then abruptly the power went out and we didn't realize what, what the cause was at first until uh, we realized that the first tower had collapsed. As we got bits and pieces of information that bridges were starting to close down and everything, I decided I need to get my children out of there. You know, we got to the firehouse and uh, first thing you do is we have a, a board that tells everybody who's working. So the first thing you look at the board and you say, well, these are the guys we've already lost. By the time you know, we got our gear together, there were about 13 of us that arrived all around the same time. We all loaded stuff into the lieutenant's van and we just drove across Canal Street to the west side. I was driving down, I could see black smoke, people were stopping. And you, you, know, you know, what's going on? You can see a lot of black smoke. And then uh, a few minutes later, that second plane hit, and then uh, we knew we were in trouble. Traffic just froze, and I got out, and everyone was just looking, and I got out and turned around and watched as the building just slowly came down. Stuyvesant High School was uh, supposed to be the disaster relief zone for any disaster that, that happened. Um, in the World Trade Center area in the wake of the World Trade Center bombing that happened a few years prior. Um, so I remember seeing people coming in completely covered in debris and ash from the uh, tower collapsing and uh, setting up tables and chairs as quickly as we could before we had to evacuate. My thought, because the first building had fallen, that maybe they had got all the firemen out. I know usually in a structural, when there's structural damage, they get them out quite quickly, the firemen, but there was just so many and their communications weren't working well that day. The chaos of people running around and crying and screaming, cell phones all over the place, um, briefcases, people with um, minor injuries, but also like really bad burns. I'll never forget the avalanche of people that suddenly came in. We had about 10 minutes warning, so some of us were outside ready to take in the patients and expected a good number, but never that many. There is a world in which, unfortunately, we continue to see clashes, conflicts, blood being on the streets. Therefore, one would say, so the people have not learned anything from September 11? Well, they learned, but on the other hand, this is a human reality. I think just having people take on a different perspective of, of a global perspective of the United States role in the Middle East or in any uh, foreign location, I think, is, is the most important uh, takeaway from 9-11. I've noticed you know, big changes on notification of threats and, and the way word gets passed down and communications are all changed.
I hope it's for the best, and I hope it's, it's everything we are doing works. There is a strong now will and a strong sense of the sacredness of human life, of the uniqueness of human life for any individual. The city has definitely learned a big lesson, I think. It's definitely safer. The police department has learned a big lesson, how it deals with terrorism, how uh, it prevents terrorism. But I think uh, the lessons are going to keep coming, you know, as time goes on. After Katrina and the Japanese nuclear disaster, the same lessons were learned again, that you need good communications, you need secure power. People have changed a lot because they are aware of what our role is, what we do now. People know what, what's the paramedic instead of thinking that we're just ambulance drivers. They're more courteous and they're more attentive and they understand our role and, and I think they appreciate our role better now. As far as the fire department go, I know their technology has changed, their strategy has changed, their training has changed, they're more terrorist aware. I mean, th that's what we got to deal with today. Uh, the whole country has changed on a whole because of that, naturally, and we just cannot let that happen again. The feeling of watching people walk around looking for their loved ones with their posters and the pictures of those who pretty much all had died, there was a tenderness there. There was a compassion that we felt for each other that I'd like the world to have. I would say from the religious point of view that we have an increased cooperation among the various religious groups with Roman Catholics, Protestants, and then outside of Christianity, Jewish, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, all kinds of religions. So that's a very, very good development. This truck, truck one, never got closure. We never found uh, Brian McDonald, who was in this truck. We waited a few days and we didn't hear anything. And um, we were hoping that, you know, okay, he's missing and maybe there's a chance. 10 years have gone by, but Brian is still with us every day, you know. We, we never found anything from Brian, so. That's the one thing that strikes me as uh, the most difficult part to get over. There was hardly anyone that survived. You would expect there'd be people here and there, but there was so few that survived. I lost so many colleagues, friends. Um, 79 were lost at windows on that day. My first concern, of course, was the guys from my company, which was Ladder 6, knowing that they were in the building and at that point, they had no idea what was going on. They never recovered Kenny's body or any part of his body, but we did recover um, part of his helmet that was pretty special to have that piece. I never start a work day where I don't think of a friend or a colleague where this day isn't dedicated to their memory because this is the work they were doing when they lost their lives and this is the work that I am fortunate enough to be able to do. And I, I dedicate my work life to them, and I have for the last 10 years. We found out that they had gotten rescued from where they were inside the building. They wound up taking their time with an elderly woman coming down the stairs, and by doing that, whether they saved her or she saved them, it worked out perfect for my company. They wound up in a little pocket of that stairway that was so essential, and survived the whole situation. It was referred to as a miracle, and by all means, it was a miracle of Ladder 6 that they walked out of there. We made it to the 28th floor, and then that was when the South Tower collapsed, and uh, Captain Jonas uh, made the decision that we should probably start going down. Uh, when we got to the 19th floor, we encountered Josephine Harris. She literally became the reason why we went to the, to the World Trade Center, and, and they were gonna take care of her. The more, more fatigue she got, uh, the more I had, I had to uh, help her along, and the whole North Tower uh, started to rumble. Every time a floor would hit another floor, the vibration was so violent, we'd be bouncing off the floor. The last I uh, saw Josephine, she, her face was right here in my face, and then she disappeared because of the, uh, the cloud of dust that was coming up the stairwell. And we were getting pelted with uh, high winds and, and, 
and debris that was in the wind. That the, the collapse was compressing the air that was in the World Trade Center. Once it was done collapsing, there was like this dead silence. At one point, uh, there was a little bit of ch chatter on the radio, but not much. All of a sudden, I heard uh, Captain Jonas's voice. He said, Billy, are you there? And I said, yes, I am. I started picking things off of me, and that's when Josephine came up out of the uh, dust, and she was right at my feet. Finally, after about uh, probably four, four or four and a half hours, uh, guys from Ladder 43 actually came, and came across the rubble. A lot of the dust had cleared, and we were able to see out, and they were able to see in, and we were, that was when we met up. When we first got out, my, my first thoughts were that I couldn't believe we survived that. And uh, I was very proud of those guys that day.